consensus layer, execution layer, and other research teams. Um, he's going to be talking about layer two scaling, and more specifically about optimism bedrock on EIP um, 4844. Welcome, Proto. You have the, the slides? Uh -huh. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's good to be here. Um, yeah, looking back at previous EVE Berlin and DEPCON editions, we went through these this cycles of skating. And uh, well, now we're at the point where proof of stake is just a few days away. And we can look at uh, sharding in a serious form. And before sharding, we want to be more iterative. And that's what EIP 4844 is about. And uh, Bedrock is like the, the merge for optimism. We're adopting the same kind of architecture. We're going to the very bleeding edge of layer two tech. And uh, you'll see how that works together. Um, so I'm Proto. I work at OP Labs, working on the technology behind optimism. And this talk dives into data availability, modular blockchains, just the introduction. I know there's another talk, which I highly recommend, from Ansgar about modular blockchain. And then there is EIP 4844, the killer solution to increase the data for rollups. Then dunk sharding, this is the next phase of the EIP. And then we have bedrock. And if you combine everything, you get something beautiful. So what's data availability? Data availability is all about hosting the inputs, making sure that everybody can permissionlessly reconstruct the state. So whatever the layer two design looks like, if it's ZK or optimistic, you are able to reproduce the outputs in a permissionless way to be able to challenge or contest what's happening. And so data availability is this part of the equation. The other part is the execution check. This is what makes rollups unique. We have ZK rollups with validity proofs, and then we have various kinds of optimistic rollups. And then the one with the interactive game seems to be winning, where every optimistic rollup is adopting this technology to bisect the execution trace and to allow for more flexibility and more, more than just a specific VM set where the ZK rollups are focused on right now, but this more general thing where you can put all of GAF into the proof and show that it uh, produces a certain output. And so with data availability, there's this difference between forever available and once available. What we need to be able to reconstruct the state or to challenge the, the sequencer, like the, the primary producer of the rollup, we need to have permissions access to data that changes very, very frequently. It's not like a, a storage thing where if you get it a day later, it's fine. You want to have this, all these changes that are coming right at your fingertips to be able to challenge whoever operates the rollup. And so this is a stronger guarantee than just storage. And so if we can guarantee this shorter time frame with a very high quality, with Ethereum layer one coming to consensus to the data, then we can make the layer two a lot more secure while still increasing the data by a lot. And so this is about modular blockchains, right? Where we are taking the, the thing apart so we can solve the complexity issues in each component and add the type of scaling that we need for larger adoption. So this is where we are today. This is going to be very soon very much a legacy. Proof of stake is happening. Um, we have this ancient API that splits the beacon node, the consensus layer, and the execution layer. And by doing so, we get to keep of the Ethereum one state transactions it will be almost seamless to go through the merge. But then we can add this proof of stake component. We can add a separate consensus layer that builds the chain, that commands, this is the new block, this is the new block, whereas the execution is just focused on the user experience that everybody's used to, whereas the beacon node is like this new consensus. And so you split the two. We go from this monolithic thing to a little bit more modular. But it can be way more modular, right? We can add the data layer. We can add more execution layers, or more execution engines. And this is what we are looking at with layer two, to use the same kind of architecture 
to not break Ethereum, to stay very equivalent, but to not like reinvent everything either. We want this execution engine to be shared with layer one. And so we have the layer one source of the data, and then the layer two where we pull in the data and we push back the transactions. And this will become more clear once we start to talk about Bedrock. Bedrock adopts this design. But I'll dive into the scaling part first, and like how we get data on Ethereum. So this is today very inefficient. We hook an EVM to an EVM. We don't get much scaling beyond just hijacking call data for like a little bit cheaper availability, and then pushing all the execution costs to layer two. We can do better than this. So what we need is a data provider, and then layer two execution hooked to that. So we're not hook hooking to call data anymore. We're hooking to specialized modular data. And this is what the competition looks like. They're doing the same thing, except they don't have this, this beautiful ecosystem of DeFi and everything else on the layer one EVM. And we don't have both. We don't want to break Ethereum. We want to add to Ethereum. And so this is what EIP4844 is about. It's the first step to dunk sharding. And the meme is, well, proto dunk sharding. <laughs> We'll get there. Also, shout out to many other people. It's not just us. We have people working on the cryptography, on DevNet development, on specifications, and I'm sure a lot more, many more people that I'm forgetting about. So shout out to <laughs> the whole crowd backing this EIP. And then we have uh, this combination of layer one EVM and this new thing, layer one availability. We're adding this to the consensus layer of layer one. And then now we can attach many more EVMs, many more capacity um, from layer two to layer one. Better data availability. And so this is the life cycle of a transaction that adds data to layer one. It starts with layer two. We bundle it up. We compress it. Whatever we need to do to basically pack it up for layer one availability. We put it in the layer one transaction pool. The transaction gets confirmed by GAF, but then the data as a sidecar is moved to the beacon chain. It doesn't stay with GAF. It doesn't affect the EVM. The EVM is just execution, blob data as a consensus task. And then we retain it in the consensus layer for long enough to secure the layer two usage. So like approximately a month, perhaps. And then afterwards, the layer two should persist that. It's their job to host their own historical data. But it's the job of layer one to provide the security layer that layer twos need for this, this challenging game against the sequencer. And this is what the lifecycle looks like. I think the previous slide is clearer about this, where we're going from layer two, from the sequencer that produces data through layer one, and then back into the layer two verifier that reads the data. I'll make these slides available so you can have a closer look. And then what's the block transaction about? We have EIP1559. It's like the regular transaction type. We add this little field called uh, the, the version hashes. These are these references to blobs uh, to commit to the data. But then the data is kept separate as a sidecar and moved into this new consensus layer. This is what the actual transaction type looks like. It gets a little bit technical, but it does have the, these arrows, these commitments, to make sure that everything is consistent and that the things that live on the consensus layer and the things that on the execution layer match. And then, um, yeah, like we have blobs as a sidecar. It's not part of the EVM state sync, so you can sync your GAF node independent of the consensus layer. And as long term, this enables us to go for full dunk sharding. Full dunk sharding is this process where not every node has to host all the data, but instead we use sampling to split these, the data availability. There's this little extension to the engine API to make sure the sidecar data makes its way into the beacon chain. It's almost trivial. The hard part here is the transaction type and the transaction pool. And then we can think about rollup integration. Again, this gets a little bit into the leads. 
Uh, but we thought about CK proofs as well as optimistic proofs when designing this EIP. How do we get to a point where the data can be verified to be available, be used efficiently as part of this uh, validity proof or fraud proof? The ZK proof is a little bit complicated. ZK in general is complicated. But what happens is that we're doing this proof equivalence, where we have the data commitment, and then we have the ZK specific data commitment of the choice of the layer two. We show that they're equivalent, and then you can do the, the remaining part with the ZK proof to show that we are going from one previous state that's already confirmed on layer one to a new state that introduces certain new imported data. And so this is the second part where we check the validity proof and import it and change the state. Similarly, interactive fraud proofs, they have this oracle, or this, this introduction of pre-images to go from the previous state to the new state with new transactions applied. And what we do during the oracle, we use the pre-compile that shows just a little part of the data. And the bisection game allows you to just have to prove one step. So you don't have to show up with all the data on layer one. You only have to show up with the little part of the data that was involved in the contested execution step. So what's the full dank sharding? Once we have the separation, we can go even larger. We want to make the data available, but we don't want every node to host all the data. So what we need for this is data availability sampling. And this is this random poking around to make sure that other nodes also have the data. And a very clever design, um, making data redundant enough that if you are making these random queries, the chances are extremely high that you can ensure that the node actually does have the data. And then in aggregate, if every validator is doing this, and we come to a two-thirds consensus about, around the data, then we can make sure that we follow a chain where all the data is, in fact, available without actually forcing all the validators to host all the, copy, all the data. And the nice thing about this is that we don't require any changes to EAP484 on the execution engine. It's just going to be a beacon chain upgrade at this point to go even larger. And then we get to this immense availability throughput number, which is already an increase upon 484. So we're talking about somewhere between the order of 100 times to 1,000 times compared to what we have today, making layer twos a lot more usable. And so with dank sharding, we get even more of these EVM bubbles on layer two, and we can host a lot more of their data. So what's the development status here? I've keep, kept updating this slide over different conferences. We are making good progress with breakout calls, specification improvements, hackathons, workshops. And then at EVE Berlin, we're also going to experiment. So keep your eyes out for that. Or join us if you're at the hackathon. Um, this is the work that's going on. We have specifications, prototypes, API specifications, more specifications for the cryptography that's involved. And then we have a DevNet up and running with some f simplified fee structure. The ne next task is to evolve this DevNet to the, the next version of the specification that properly implements the fee structure for these blob data transactions. OK, so how are we going to fit a rollup on 484 in practice? Well, the current rollup technology is not sufficient, but we are getting there to a point where it's so modular that we can swap out data very, very easily. Uh, so what Bedrock does is it adopts the merge arch architecture and then we're able to support snap sync. We're able to support block propagation. We're able to support a fully equivalent execution environment, so equivalent that we're, we don't have to change anything about GAF, except the option to insert deposits from layer one into layer two, and well, the deposit transaction type itself, of course. And so we use the standard typing for the deposits, and we have this improved block derivation function where we can guarantee, make hard guarantees about reorganizations of layer one forcing reorganization of layer two. We can force the deposits to, be come, or to get processed uh, by the layer two chain within certain timeframes. And so we limit the 
the sequencer in such a way that we can guarantee safety for users. And today, many rollups, they have poor support for reworks or like they have a very large confirmation depth and they don't do this proper block propagation. Bedrock will solve these problems and we will get to a much faster form of syncing by adopting layer one tech. We don't have to duplicate or like make these conflicting implementations on different things. We can share this technology and then improve it together. So this is what it looks like. We have the beacon chain, execution chain, GAF, or other even one one clients. Um, I think Nethermind also has talks during this conference. Hope to hear more about the scaling on layer one as well. And then we have the OP node that proxies data to the layer two execution engine. And I'm saying proxy because the OP node doesn't have a database. It's literally just following layer one data, and layer one consensus to keep the layer two in sync. And then this way, we don't have to make many changes to GAF. And so we have the backbone, essentially, the layer one. This is the, the thing of utmost security, utmost availability, everything, right? But then we have the layer two, where in the happy case, you can sync much, much faster. You can get two second blocks. You can get a more gas per second. And uh, yeah, this is what a modular blockchain stack looks like or the beginning of it. And then we have a data provider separate from the execution on layer one, enabling the rollup node to both scale the data as well as process the deposits and interact with the ecosystem of layer one, with the DeFi ecosystem. You want the best of both worlds. You don't want to separate the data into like some third party platform. We get uh, both from layer one. And then we have the engine API, just like we have on layer one, on layer two, to update the GAF node. So we have a test net. It's just up and running, very experimental, but very fun during the hackathon to play with. It serves all the regular things uh, you expect from the EVM chain, very latest version of GAF, literally just rebased a few days ago. And you can, you can play with it and see the two second block time, get the hang of like, larger throughput, better compression, and check if anything breaks. We are trying to do more of this partner testing to make sure that our integrations work as expected uh, before we go live. And so how does it look like if we combine these technologies? We take Forward for Foreign and we take Bedrock, and we only really have to change this yellow bubble, the layer one retrieval. All the other parts of Bedrock stay the same. It's very modular. You don't have to change this monolithic thing. And so the raw transactions on layer one are replaced with blob transactions. And uh, Bedrock otherwise just works the exact same. So this is what the OP stack is about. Flexible data availability, flexible proof system, flexible execution engine. We can eventually support Zika proofs. We can change the engine to some other thing, maybe move or whatever else you would want to support. And data availability is the first target to be able to scale uh, further than just what call data supports. Um, this is what it looks like. We have different modules for the sequencer side to be able to submit data and to submit output routes, or these are called proposals or state routes, to be able to withdraw from the layer two back into the layer one. And the key part here is that the batching is separate, completely separate from proposing, so you get to be able to host your data elsewhere. And then uh, combine the two, fee experimentation, benchmarking, sync tests, maybe KCT ceremony integration, and this is the bleeding edge of layer two scaling where we get scale and we get Ethereum equivalent execution with higher throughput. So check out, if you want to check Bedrock, bedrock.optimism.io. If you want to check out the EIP, it's, uh, it has its own website with an introduction. There are more resources for developers also, linked in the website, also in the HackMD. And then you can find us on Discord, and you can find the EAP work on the R&D Discord, and we can uh, scale Ethereum together during the Eve Berlin Hackathon.
Thank you. Any questions? Hey, how's it going? Um, I have a question around um, custody games or you know, serving this blob data. Other, for a layer one validator, other than in the block they have you know, commitments to the blobs, do they have any obligation to serve the blob data like going forward for the month or anything right. like it? So we are talked about this data availability, where we have different time scales of short-term availability and long-term availability. The trickiest part here is the difference between finalization and non-finalized data. Once you have sampling or once you have a proof of custody, you can definitely reorg away from unavailable data um, as long as you have not finalized the layer two chain. Past finality, it's a different story. You cannot reorg away anymore. But what you can do is make the finality guarantee so strong that you know that so many actors on the network did see the data that there's no way to really get, get it lost and rather you make sure that one honest actor is enough to resubmit the data to the others. And so data does stay available for the full month that we intend with ERP4844.